Hi, everybody. Hello. And here's a whole gaggle of us here, and we're going to do some cards for you. So welcome to the Cool Crone Oracle. And I've got Val here, Marina, and Cleo. We're waiting. Gerald's going to be joining us shortly. And while we're waiting a few minutes, let's just go around and everybody say hello and tell us what's going on. Hey, Val, what's going on for you? Uh, hi. Uh, well, I just want to say I'm having a, an author on my show, and I'm going to me interview. Yes, I am going to interview nice. the cl closet spiritualist. Uh, so, uh, that's Franco Romano, and that is going to be on Tuesday, uh, the four May 14th at 1 p.m. Pacific, uh, 4 p.m. Eastern. Uh, excited about that. And then after that, I'll be on with Deanne, um, Shield Maiden for a nice show. And, um, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward. My normal, regular shows are coming up, and most of you are on them. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're kind of like a drill team, you know. We just yeah. Like <laughs> <laughs> we're not on YouTube. We're on. <laughs> I, I hope that's a good thing because I really of like course. it. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's great, Bill. Hey, that show on the 14th, I think I'm going to be on there, too. Oh, good. Yeah. Do you know what? I, I mean, what? We're, we seem to be one big happy family. <laughs> I know. I know. We're getting a little weird with it. But, okay. Do you know, is it personal or political, or do you have any idea? Uh, yeah, I believe it's p p political. If she hasn't changed it, it is political. Okay, okay so, great. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Yeah. Great. Well, that sounds like fun. And Marina, what's going on for you? Huh. Well, regular shows, Sisters of the Mystical Tarot, Messages for Lightworkers. Um, next week um, on Tuesday the 14th at uh, 5 p.m., I've got Ivana from Ivana Intuitive that is coming on. Nice. And then 7 p.m. is Michelle Marie of Astrological Tarot. Very nice. And uh, yeah, so we've got Golden Girls. You know what? You want to know what I'm doing? Go to my channel. Go in the community tab. I usually like to Saturday or Sunday, I'll I'll post what I'm up to this week. And then you can just go in there. Not only do you get to see what I'm up to, but you get to see the uh, uh, everybody else's channels so that you can make sure to go over and click and share, like, and subscribe to them as well. Aww. Very nice. That's, Thank really you. That's great. Thanks. So, Cleo, what's going on with you? Well, first of all, I am streaming this to my channel. So anybody that wants to check it out on my channel, I appreciate that. Also, I just recently put up a new video um, with Little Jesus. And <laughs> there'll be another one fairly soon. I know that the, there was a huge space in between time. I'm blaming the spirit guides for that. My channel is about spirit guides. They tell me what to do, and they told me not to do anything for a while. I don't know why, but that's just the way it worked. But I am doing something that connects to that because the video actually got a little bit shorter than I wanted, and uh, there's some other things I wanted to talk about. And as far as shows go, um, uh, I've got the Real Psychics of YouTube coming up tomorrow. And yes. Monday, I've got the Mystic Four. And next Thursday, I've got the Golden Girls. And that should keep everybody busy. Make sure you make it to every single one of those shows. I didn't know you had a little Jesus video up there. And had you been advertising a little more, I would have gone over there. To <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't want to tell us about it. Plus I, plus, I put it in the wrong place on my on my <laughs> channel page <laughs> originally. So it's been up for a few days, but nobody mm. really saw it until hopefully today I'm, or yesterday. Cool. I, it in yeah. to where it should show up on the news feed thing but i don't know who knows everybody I, go watch it i yeah am. yeah I, 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 it popped up in my feed and i was like hey she didn't tell me she's doing a video and i watched it and i thought it was great and then 
the next day when I was just watching my normal news videos, it popped up again and I was like, wait, did you do a second one or a third one? <laughs> no, I, I just redid it. I don't know if I'm going to get in trouble with YouTube for doing it that way, but no, the, the second one I put up where, where they asked me a lot more questions about it and stuff. So anyway, yeah. it's, you know, I, that's when I, so I can click on videos yeah. that's supposed to be all my stuff. And now that works. So anyway, I will be doing a new one uh, mm -hmm. by next week. Oh, that's great. I'm so glad you're doing videos. Yeah. And um, yeah, you won't get in trouble unless you have non-copyrighted music, which is what- no, I'm not, I'm not going to yeah. have any music. I'm not going to have anything. Just me. Just me talking. Well, I love having music in my videos. And I know people like music in mm -hmm. the videos. And yes. So recently, you're going to be here, or soon, all of you guys are going to be hearing different music in all my videos because I have to change out everything. And, um, you know, the composers that do the copyright free music, God bless them. Their music is gorgeous. I don't blame them for wanting to monetize and make a little mm -hmm. money off of them. But there's no warning. Just all of a sudden you're told, yeah. oh, you're infringing. <laughs> I'm like, wait, it was okay for the last year. Now it's not yeah. okay. So I'm getting busily uh, swapping out music for every, every uh, mm -hmm. all of my theme songs and videos and stuff. And so mm -hmm. um, lots of love to all those composers who are finally making some money off of their music because it's beautiful music. I really love it. So um I'm doing a few shows. I'm doing that one that we mentioned with Deanne on the 14th. And then, of course, next week will be Polyterology. And tomorrow night is the second installment of The Real Psychics of YouTube. And because we had a little snafu with the first um, broadcast, the broadcast was fine and it was up for a couple of days. But something went wonky with YouTube's algorithm and the video just literally disappeared from my channel. So I uploaded it again under just plain videos. So if anybody's looking for that video, it is on my channel under videos, not live, because I had to republish it. And um, I also had to change the music for the theme songs. Okay. Well, I hope everybody another home run. Yay. I, I hope you like the new music that went with that. And, I do. And um, yes. I hope everybody will join us tomorrow night for that because um we know that you should be there. So you know. You know it. We already know. We already know. So uh let's take a look at our comments and see what our wonderful chatters are doing. I'm gonna try to slide up here and see if there's questions. Hello, Linda. Hello, Barbara Nesper. Hello, everyone. Froxy Roxy. Um, Heart Center Tarot and Val are here. Amazing. Oh, my gosh. Really clear the spears here. Goodness. Okay. <laughs> so let's see. Um, I'm, 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 I'm sure somebody's going to have a question in here. Uh, question. I don't know about this. Does anybody know about this as I look at more questions? Oh, uh, apparently, yeah. Both, yeah, both of them resigned. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yes, she, I did hear that. He said it was mental health, the Miss USA. Um, yeah. Wow. Thing about that. Yes. Yeah. Wow. So um, what would we be reading on? I mean, didn't they already say what their reasons were? Yeah. Yeah, mental health. yeah they did. Well, one of them, yeah, one of them said mental health and the other one said that the um her what was it her her point of view or her whatever no longer aligned with what um that's uh, yeah miss teen yeah and, 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 yeah. and that, 
Yeah, that's, their values were compromised. Thank you, that's, Karen. That's, that's the words I was Yeah, that's for. a perfect wording for yeah. your mental health reason, too. Without the 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 Miss USA didn't say it, and the yeah. Miss Teen put it all out there for you. <laughs> so, well, I hope it doesn't end up having to do with something like the gymnasts went through, that there's somebody behind the scenes harassing not, these women or... Mm -hmm. Uh, I think it's probably more in what who's paying, who's sponsoring what, and who's asking you to appear where and what it's about is not aligned to their own personal beliefs. And it's probably a lot, some of it politically motivated, possibly, mm -hmm. or sponsoring th products and things that they are not yeah. aligned with. Um, well, it sounds like there's something to read on there. So here's another comment about this with the mental health brought on by pageant policies. Yeah. So let's let's read on it, ladies. So uh, was there something a little more nefarious going on other than just a philosophical difference? Mm -hmm. You know what? I think I think it, there was something going on a little bit different. I'm not not quite sure what that was, but something that just really sat wrong with these contestants, where they're just like, "Okay, this is not worth it. I'm not going there." Um, and maybe, maybe just prejudicial, or oh, the first card out, the tower. Yeah, I got the death on the bottom of my deck. Yeah. Hi, Gerald. Hey, Gerald. Hi. Sorry for being late. That's okay. Yeah, they felt like they were stabbed in the back. Mm. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. yeah. Something, yeah, something uh, going on behind the scenes where the, the impression is that, you know, could, we're, um, we're a very happy family. Look at us. Look at us. Just don't pull back the curtains. Exactly. Wow. I'm going to see if I can make us a little bigger. There we go. Because um, Go ahead, Val. I just wanted to say, don't forget that they have stringent rules where you can't be dating someone. You have to be in your hotel by uh, nine or before that. You have to. You can't drink alcohol. You can't do this. You can't do that very tight, tight, stringently, and you have a chaperone all the time. So there's no life that way, the way you might want your mental health to be taken care of and too as well. I just wanted to say that. I kind of don't feel like that, you know, they knew the restrictions apply yeah. before they ever went into it. Yeah. I yeah. think that it goes beyond that where there's just, it feels kind of underhanded um, that, 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 yeah, that these people are saying to themselves, I wanted to do this and I wanted to be a part of it, but what you're asking me to put myself through is not worth it and it's affecting my mental health. So I, I, do, I do think that as time goes by, we'll hear more about what in the world is going on here. Mm -hmm. And Ness says they gave mental health reason, but the letter once decoded said, I am silenced. So, whoa, mm. whoa, what do you got, Colleen? Oh, I don't, I, I'm, I'm just hitting a wall. I, it's like, yeah, the, there's yeah, just, they don't, wall. It feels like that. They don't, they don't really want to, they don't want to rat out whoever was really doing what's no. going on, but but they don't want to be a part of it anymore. And I don't think they really want to talk about it very much right now. Mm -hmm. I think it is going to take some time for them to accept everything that's happened to them and accept why they did it in the first place, why they quit. I think they just need like a good six months of kind of uh, mental health quarantine, <laughs> you know, just yeah. deprogramming. Yeah. Yeah. Cause well, whatever it is, it's something that's really wrong. I mean, you know, they they immediately came upon this and thought, no, this is not right and I can't fix it. So I'm just not going to be a part of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and if it's possibly hurting them, they don't well, want to. Yeah. That's what yeah. I'm thinking. It is. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, I did pageants when I was young. And you they sure were, did, didn't you? I wondered if you were going to mention yeah, that. I Colleen, didn't. she ran for Miss Burian. She ran for this yeah, <laughs> Miss Seafair. Um, she didn't <laughs> win, but that's not the point. Yeah, I mean, no. Hey, Miss Burian, I was first runner up both times. Oh, first runner up. Yeah. Oh man, that's pretty good. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But and we we all we we would think you could do it anyway. We think you should. Well, both, you know, the first time the girl that won was um, really talented. She played the um, well, she played the xylophones, but she played the electronic mm -hmm. version of it, the Vibralux. Mm -hmm. And she was really good. Mm. She wasn't your typical pageant looking girl, you know, but she yeah. just wanted to do it. The second time I won, the girl was just really super pageant looking and not that talented. And so every time she had to go do a show or a presentation or a ribbon cutting, I was trotted out to do the talent portion of the contest. So, nice. <laughs> yeah, if they paid me, it would have been nice. I was I was doing a lot of gigs then, and I, every time I had to do one for them, I'm like, God, could you throw me a few bucks? I mean, I'm giving up a Friday night, you know, yeah, Demolay dance to do this stupid thing, you know. Demolay dance. Didn't you get a scholarship or some scholarship money from that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I did. I did. That's how that's, I paid for one quarter of my um, uh, community college uh, with one scholarship. And I paid for another part of it with the Miss Seafair scholarship, which was way bigger than the Miss Burian scholarship. There was like 30 or 40 girls in it. And you didn't even have to place to get the scholarship. You just had to be oh, in wow. the pageant. It was great. Oh, and then like four, five, six years later, I went back and did the Miss Burian pageant again, got another scholarship, and I used that for college too. So, I mean, I didn't pay my way through college, but, um, you know, I made it. Helped. It, it helped. Sure. Everything helped. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I love what Book Bewitched asks Is there anything at all Colleen hasn't done? <laughs> And there really isn't, you know, no. she is amazing. <laughs> well, there's plenty of things I haven't done. <laughs> and then Amanda Carroll says, Miss Burian, wow, I live minutes from Burian. Yeah, you know what, Amanda, Colleen and I grew up in Burian, and uh, I lived there for 50 years, <laughs> and then I moved north. But yeah, that's funny that we would find anybody that went that knows yeah, about I'm Burian. impressed. And yeah, and I, I can tell from the way she wrote it in the chat that she even knows how to pronounce it. Because most, uh -huh. most people look at that word and they go, Berean? What is that? It's, <laughs> it's a weird word, but that's I love that. Yeah, that was fun. But yeah. That, that I, was want, I just want to comment that Gerald smells really good. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what you're wearing, Gerald. Well, yeah, what but are you wearing? You're smelling really good. It's a secret blend. I'm not going. I'm not at liberty to discuss it. Oh, <laughs> all right. Yeah, then. I love it. Mm -hmm. Okay, then. All righty. Well, let's look at our other questions and see if we can come up with some other ones. Let's see. Um, okay, so we'll just put this one up. So Julie McGoldrick says, "Hi, ladies. So nice to get here. Can you tell me if Cody will get the job he has applied for with Zenleaf?" I don't know who Cody is, and I don't know what Zenleaf is. Zenleaf. And I see nobody's going to help me out. Perfect. Oh, this <laughs> just ask, will Cody get the job? You know. Yeah. Will Cody get the job? You get he's in the running? I get okay. that he's in the running. Yeah. Okay. They're looking at him. They're thinking right. about him. Cody and, is um, Julie's son, and Zen Leaf is a medical medic is medical cannabis. Oh, oh okay. Well, I'm I'm gonna be the the, the naysayer here. Um, 
I get that Ten of Swords followed by the Eight of Pentacles. I think that he might need just a little more, um, just a few more courses. So I don't know if if he'll get it this time. It doesn't feel like he gets it this time. But if he takes uh, a couple more courses, then I think that is is um, a much better a much better uh, yeah a much better outcome if he if he takes some courses. Yeah, I, I got a yes, but it's not everything that he expected it to be, or it, that he's expecting it to be. There's um, there's stuff that uh, you know. I have the Ace of Cups and the Devil, so that uh, does suggest there's some emotional hangups about things and some a lot of temptations coming on, and. Um, it could be a very nice transition job for him into something else. Get him, get him to have some experience. But it's also like what you said, Marina. Get, you know, take some classes, do something. Gets it gets experience to be able to to move in through. Yeah. Um, you know, I have to agree with you, Gerald. Um, here I get the judgment card, and really, it's like he can pave his own path, but it's up to him. And the Knight of Swords. He's going to do a lot of different things in this job that, um, like, he has to improvise what he's doing. He may not even know exactly what he's supposed to do, but he's somehow going to be doing things that are going to challenge him. And uh, I do get the Page of Pentacles, but my feeling about this um, Knight of Cups, even though it looks like a conquest, it's really not going to be your final job. Uh, Wheel of Fortune, it's just somewhere you're landing to get a little more experience and you will find something that suits better um, <clears throat> coming in the future. Julie did say um, Cody is autistic and has a stutter. He oh. is very high functioning. Okay. Well, that is not going to hold him back from getting something better. Yeah. It is not going to hold him back. He's destined for better jobs. Absolutely. Yeah, it kind of feels like this might be a springboard to something else. Yep. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, um, good. So, if anybody else who wants to... Um, ask a question just put it in all caps and we'll we'll add it to the list all right so we can get rid of that one right uh, and i want to verify these are personal questions correct yes yeah. okay so the next one we have is from oh is this julie also um maybe we'll come back to that one julie and we'll let somebody else julie, get a yes. question We'll let we'll let someone else get a question answered, and we'll come back to yours because we we don't have a lot right now in the in the queue. All right. So, Joyful Journey wants to know. I'd love to know who my guides are. We would too. The Joyful. question is right up my alley. This is just what I was talking about on my new video on my channel <laughs> called Spirit Guides at Work. Um, you know, it's not really important to know who your spirit guides are. What's important is to make the connection and know, you know, that you can feel that their, their presence, you can feel their guidance. And most of all, you'll feel their unconditional love. And once you get involved with it that way, let, let, I'll say that you are already that way. Then you can start, you just, what you do is you ask them, who are you? And what I did, I mean, I wasn't sure what I was doing. I thought I was just talking to my own thoughts. And I was like, who the hell are you? And <laughs> it took a while <laughs> for me to find mm -hmm. out uh, that my spirit guide, my main spirit guide is Jesus. But that's, you know, I suppose Jesus is a lot of people's spirit guides. But it's they're more concerned about uh, making a connection with you rather than knowing that who they are, unless it fits in. That's just something that would be good for you to know. But I would say, if you're if you're that connected, just ask them, "Who are you?" Mm -hmm. Good one. Anybody else? 
Yeah. I think that pretty much sums it up. Yeah. 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 Like on, 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 yeah what Cleo said. Yeah. What Cleo yes. said. Exactly. <laughs> All right. All right. So uh, let's see. What's the, oh, well, we have to show this. Alamac 59 gave $10 to somebody's uh, channel. We don't know. Well who. done. Hey. Well done. Thank you. Yep. Very nice. All right. So Proxy Roxy mm -hmm. has an issue with all the weather events, tornadoes, etc. we're having in the South mostly. Will MAGA begin to realize there is more to climate change than they thought? Hmm. Will MAGA begin to realize? Oh, I really need that Jeopardy music right now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, I'm telling you, they honestly don't care they are not going to care about the weather. They are too busy on their issues. They're on their new journey. What's the next new journey they're going to pay attention to and make noise at? And, um, yeah, I, I don't think they care. I don't think they're going to pay any attention to it. Yeah, I, don't, I, I agree with Val. I don't either. I think, you know, if it's not to their advantage, which it won't be, mega people are not you know they they don't believe in that in the first place and um but you know you we are seeing especially over the last few years just this catastrophic weather and i mean the things that are going on down in the south oh my god what those people are going through but it would be nice if um if the megas would come to their senses and realize we have got to make some changes uh it's it's going to take a while. Like, let's just say that suddenly we all are all of a sudden, all of us had electric cars, which mm -hmm. would definitely change everything. <clears throat> it would still take about five years if that happened across the board. And it's not, you know, it's not just the United States. This is all over the world. And we're just really mm -hmm. throwing up the air and we're really causing big problems. I know they say we'd have these kind of changes no matter what. That's sort of true. But we are adding to it, and we know it. We, we know definitely it. are adding to it, Cleo. You're right. You well, know, decades we've been doing this. So even yeah. the, fract the fractal, the drilling. I mean, all these things yes. that they're doing that are just causing havoc within the earth and causing earthquakes and all kinds of things. Um, yeah, there's so many things, but they that's a dim issue according to the GOP. So. Yeah. Of course, it's not something they're going to touch. <laughs> you know, and Biden is doing all he can to, you know, to come up with different things to help uh, with the energy and help with. Uh, yeah. And what was he doing? Um, it find different different sources of energy and stuff yeah. like that. Right. But yeah, this, you know, the things with the cars—they yeah. really are pushing. We want to get the electric cars going. <laughs> you know, we did, but you know, we don't think things through. You're going to make an electric car, but you're going to have the problem with these batteries. And what yeah, are you going to do with the lithium. batteries? Yeah, yeah. The lithium battery thing, first of all, there's not enough lithium. Second of all, it it's going to go to a lithium graveyard, and there's no way you can get rid of it. I mean, there's yeah. just tons of things out there, different ways you can do electric. And yeah, I mean, forget about the battery. What are you going to do when the earth is so hot that the tires melt on the road? There you go. They can't <laughs> drive. I mean, there's, there's, a there's <laughs> other ideas here to be considered. So, yeah. Any, anybody else with, with more stuff about that? That's all. I true. got. I got no because it's not. You know, they don't have a solution for it, so they don't care. No, okay. they don't care. Okay. It's all about their, their own personal wealth and gain. How can they care about the weather for the whole world? Yeah. So so everybody's had their say. Okay. So I, I have a little bit something different. I have a little bit different um, angle on this. What they're going to do is they're realizing that they're losing all their money and they need a topic. They need an issue to band around to get people to donate just to them. So somehow the Republicans are going to come up with a pretty evil scheme, actually, so that they can get people to donate. And the head of this bringing it all in is going to be a queen of wands. So this could be something where, like, 
maybe even Lara Trump, she can be kind of a queen of wands with the RNC, is going to have <laughs> another another funnel for money. Now, she may be funneling it all to Donald Trump, but it's going to MAGA. And what they're going to do, I also got the devil with these cards, is they're going to get people to donate in the name of saving the earth and climate change, but they're not going to do anything about it. But they are going to fundraise off of it and they're going to make a lot of money off of it because the coffers are drying up and they need a new a new um, dog and pony show. And this is the new dog. If, and pony if, show. if they were in power, if they were in power to uh, to do anything, I could see that happening in a New York minute like you wouldn't believe so fast and be one of the first things they would do. Mm -hmm. but I don't know that they would do that without being in the. A leadership role. Maybe not. I got, I got the King of Pentacles here and the Four of Swords. I mean, they're they're trying to build on something, and it's nefarious. They got the Devil here too. They're not they're not acting in good faith. So mm -mm. It's, it's another scam that they're going to play. Um, and I think I'm getting more that this is the RNC, which is now controlled by MAGA. So that's where I went with this. So you know, maybe this. Wow. Is I think, Colleen, that you are right on. I hadn't considered that, but as you were talking about it, I'm like, of course they would take something like this and benefit themselves. And you're right. They really, they're desperate for money right now. Yeah. Desperate. And they're not going to give a dime to climate change or to anybody else. They just want money for themselves. And they I, I just can't see the GOP hardliner magas going, uh, they want me to donate, and it's for climate change. I don't believe in climate change. I'm not going to donate. It's well, they, it depend, they'll word it. They'll word it in a way that you know that makes it look like a and think about it. They've lost so many people from the Republican Party. They have to figure out something to bring more people in. I agree. So, so okay. the old GOP yeah. will be in on the joke. Yeah. They'll all be in on the joke. They'll all know. Just like now in Congress, they're yeah. all in on the joke. Yeah. And they all do the stupid little things that they're supposed to do, even though they don't believe in it. Same yeah. with this. They're not going to believe in it, but they're going to use it to pull some people into the Republican Party and to pull mm -hmm. donor money into the Republican Party for their parties, yeah. for their benefit, for their lifestyle, for their, you know, karaoke parties or something yeah you know they're 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 shameless shameless so Tony is saying Al Gore was right yeah he was and and yeah. he's saying build the wall the seawall yes yeah <laughs> I, mean, I should exactly. know because a, it's really true really true you know, rising yeah, true. yeah yeah so okay so that's that and uh Alamac 859 has a question. Um, we put an offer on a house. It's It had been accepted. Is this the sanctuary one? Ooh. I'm getting the chills on that, Alamac. I, I'm getting the good chills. Uh, they're saying yes. Yes. Uh, definitely, they're saying yes. Uh, yeah, Ten of Pentacles. And uh, this is just the time you're waiting to see if your offer is going to be accepted. But your final card is completion, Ten of Pentacles. And I have the chills, so. Mm. Anybody else? Um, I, I would just say double check all the paperwork make sure if you haven't done an inspection make sure that you um, get an inspection done because you might end up changing your mind mm -hmm. about and if you if you don't change your mind about it about this house then i think there might be another you'll be there for a short time and then it could be another one which is totally opposite to what val got Oh, wishes. I don't know. That's just what I get. Yes. Yeah. And 
Yeah. <clears throat> Gerald, you do you have something? Well, I'm just curious as to, I'm, I don't understand the question because you put an offer on a house. It had been accepted. Is this the sanctuary one? I mean, because it, they were asking on another channel and they got, oh, okay. they were told that there was one coming up, not the one that they originally had, but later that there would be one that was oh. better. Okay, well then, because then that helps to make a little sense because I got a yes, I got the ace of swords. I got, yeah, yeah. And um, there, the it goes back to what Marina said. This is the eight of swords. Make sure you know, check your, check mm -hmm. all of the aspects of it. Do all of the appropriate <clears throat> things. And um, I got, I got strength as the final card. You're gonna have to stick with it. So no matter what house you buy, you always need it inspected. Yes, and everything absolutely. you need to negotiate with the owner to fix or to give you the money discount on. Yeah. <laughs> and um, they said uh, I had manifested it. Yes. Yeah. Inspection. We are requesting a more detailed. I think that sounds like a great idea. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Good. Good. Great. Yeah, I, thank you for the clarification, Val. Yeah. Yes. My, my cards are very similar. I don't need to add anything to that. That's that's pretty much what I got to. Um, okay, great. Uh, Cleo, did you say something or did you want to say something? No, I'm, I'm, I'm going with everybody else. Okay. All right. All right. So let's take these out. Now let's go back to um, Julie McGoldrick's question. Uh, hi, ladies. Will Mora get a job in her field soon? So we had Cody, now we have Laura. Just going through your whole household, Julie. You just want to make sure yeah. you just want to make sure everybody's employed. I'm with you. I'm like that too. Get a job. Like I want everybody to have a job. You know, Julie, Maura, I feel like you're asking if she'll get a job in her field soon. Well, I'm feeling like it isn't necessarily in her field. And I don't know why I'm getting like artsy kind of a thing for her. Um, and maybe it's like teaching or something about, I'm getting big vibes about that. Um, something, and she's going to really enjoy it. Um, and it's going to be in intellectual development <laughs> for her. She's going to, she's actually going to like it. Hi, right. here's the star card. So um, uh, something is coming for her. I don't know if it's going to actually be in her field, but she is definitely going to have something in an artistic way that she, and I feel like teaching is even part of it, but that's it. And this time I, I changed decks and I get, yeah, she will, she may not end up exactly like, like Val said, exactly in her field, but what she's going to be doing, she's really going to, to enjoy um, because she's going to be able to, um, to, to use her intuition and to use her, um, her art, yeah, artistic skills. So, um it may be in a in a different field, but it's something that she's really going to enjoy. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Gerald or Cleo, you guys? Um, Julie did say she has a teacher and assistant. Uh, she has, uh, I think it's a, a degree with a teacher and assistant principal. I got, you know, I got it's, it's not necessarily a job in her field, it's a job that she really likes mm -hmm. and that's what's important. Of course it is. Um, it, it, uh, it makes her very happy. She's willing to work at it. I've got the Ace of Wands and the Knight of Pentacles. My indicator card is with the Four of Wands. So that's a, a nice solid foundation. Nine of Pentacles and 10 of Pentacles. She'll, she'll be making enough money to be happy. So um, you know, and I'm I'm a prime example of this. I I have a degree, and I have 32 years, or I had 32 years experience in a job that wasn't in my field. Mm, so there you go. Yeah, same. Mm -hmm. You know, and I feel like the the people that um, she's going to be working with 
kind of help her make it so that this job is so enjoyable. Um, I don't know if they already know her, but they they just are going to be very supportive of her, and they really want her to to get this job that she wants because yeah. there's people there waiting for somebody like her to step into the this position. Um, yeah, I get the chills with what Cleo just said. Yeah. Yeah. Could be a position that she she actually manifests the, the position. It could be. Yeah. That feels right. That feels yes, yeah, this yeah. This is what I'd like. And someone says, Oh, good idea. Why don't you go do that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Very, very nice. Yeah. Um we had I had started a question before I really read the whole thing, but uh peekaboo. We're not doing political questions, so we're not going to be um, reading on that. But tune in um, uh, next Friday, and we'll be doing political questions on polyterology. Can, we, right. say, can we say anything about that question? Uh, sure, go ahead. It's, just, it's going to be passed down. It's going to go back. No. Oh. What? Oh. Add her to the stage. Sorry, that was that was that was Gerald's fault. I will I will put myself in timeout. <laughs> anyway, anyway, the Supreme Court is uh, is uh, it's a kangaroo court. They're not they're not doing what they should do. They don't want to be the one to make the final decision. They know what the decision of, is. Everybody knows that, of course, nobody on the planet has such immunity that they could go out and do absolutely anything they want. They're going to pass it back down. The appellate court that originally came up with it that said, no, you don't have blank carte blank immunity. Um, you know, it's just, it, it'll be passed back and forth. I, I am so disgusted with them. You know, they're screwing up this whole thing. So we won't get to hear anything about his, his other illegal activities until after the election. So, um, yeah, don't, don't look for any hope from those people. They're worthless. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right. So, the next one we have, okay, we did that. We just did that one. Uh, another, oh, I think this is, I didn't unstar that. Okay. Another house question. So <laughs> Connie Epley says, I'm having issues with my house. Do you see a move? Hmm. Hmm. Well, you could move, but I see that whatever the problems are, they're pretty actually not that difficult to uh, remedy if you want to put the money into it. Um, really, it's, you, you've got a big, you've got a choice of what you want to do. I mean, mm -hmm. getting rid of one house and going to another. I'm assuming you're talking about buying houses and not renting houses, but it's. Um, I don't actually see a move. I see that, that things could be repaired and fixed, and may, even if it's something to do with payments or I don't I don't know what the problems might be, but they they can be remedied, and it would be entirely up to you if you want to move to someplace else. Yeah, I get that. <clears throat> the worst is behind you, with the nine of wands. That you you. Yeah, there's um, good things that, that are changing, that are coming in. I get the four of wands. So it, it feels like whatever whatever the issue was, it does get resolved. And um, yeah, I, I don't think that a move is necessary, necessarily going to be required. I think you're over the worst of it anyway. I also got, uh, Connie, I got the, if you want to move, yes. I mean, it's, it's not an urgent thing. So yeah. I'm just, I'm just, it, it's like, cause there, there may be some disappointment around what's going on with the house and you just sort of want to go, yeah, you could resolve it or you could go somewhere else and start somewhere new, but pay attention to your finances. If you were to do that, 
because I got uh, the Four of Pentacles and the Tower. That's not necessarily a good blend in my opinion. So. Yeah. Okay. And I realized that I had, uh, we had talked about the question. It was something political, the uh, GOP and MAGA is about climate change. And I, I said we weren't going to be doing anything like that. And I, so I apologize. I, you know, when you're reading, um, your brain goes to a different place. Yeah. So sometimes you get a little like, huh? what's your what's your name? Who are you? Where? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who am I? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Maria. Uh, well, <laughs> yes. So, so I apologize if that's confusing to anybody. But we're trying to do personal questions, and we have a whole bunch of them. So we did Connie's question. So. Yeah, I've been starring him in the background. Good. Good. Yay. Thank you. Okay, so let me get rid of that. When I'm not removing Colleen from or Cleo from the stream. <laughs> okay, good. All right, so artist Liz has a question. Any messages from my guides? You know, that's crazy. I, I just am getting, uh, let your hair down and relax and have a good time. That's what I'm getting. I don't know. I don't know if that applies to anything about what you're asking about, but that's what your guides are saying to me about you. Let your hair down, let it all go, and have a good time. Mm -hmm. Nice. I'm, I'm going to back that up with um, artist Liz. It really feels like it's important for you to let the past go and to get rid of all of the stuff that's holding it on. So part of that is like Cleo said, let your hair down because I got the eight of cups. This is the card of releasing and moving on. The key thing is, is to remember to go walk to something as well as away from something. Focus on the what you're walking to. Because when you do this, you're really going, all of the negativity that's been going on, this is the Ten of Swords, is going to be, it's done. It's done. It's time for you to, on the other side of it, you get to be the Empress. So you get to actually have some new things grow. And, and but you, in order to do that, Artist Liz, you have to be willing to let go of that old stuff. Because... There's so much potential and things that you want to have come forward and that they want for you and it supports you. So there's that. I love that. And get, letting go is getting your power back. That is exactly what that is. You're getting it back. <clears throat> They're suggesting to you, have no fear. Don't let those ego mind thoughts get you. Um, it is a choice. Believe what you're doing, pay attention to the signs. Your vibration is rising. So let go and believe in yourself and don't let the mind script play in the negative for you. Um, it's all there. Your vibration's rising. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. I get the Queen of Pentacles. This is you. You've been helping others for a good, good while. So maybe now it's time to help yourself a little bit. Think about yourself and what it is, that, what what your needs are. I also get the King of Swords. So, um, you know, tell, be honest with yourself and what your needs are. And don't be afraid to ask for help. If you find that you need something, don't be afraid to uh, to ask for help. You're, you're looking down the road. You're looking at new things, um, new skills and whatnot are coming your way. So... Um, yeah, enjoy, enjoy and spend a little bit of time looking after you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what I got for you, artist Liz, is Lady Portia, divine order, do what you feel is right. An important lesson is unfolding. So mm -hmm. all the things that everybody else is saying, just let the path fall away. Like you're just taking off a coat and dumping it on the floor. Just take it off, release it, 
and pay attention to the inner messages, the voices that are coming from within and the messages that are coming from within and just let that happen for you. And that will help you with your guides. Okay. Did everybody talk? Yeah. Yep. Okay. We have another one, very similar. Let's. We're on a roll here. Lisa Keller wants to know if there's any messages from my guides and angels, please. Well, of course there are. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Lisa, okay. I feel like you have just been, um, you're just a really good person and a really kind and sweet person. And so your guides love that about you. That just means you've been following who you are all along. You know, you just, you are in touch with who you are. And um, they are very proud of you. Um, you're just a really sweet, nice person. And, um, I guess also you're pretty helpful for to others, and you know, people feel like they can talk to you. I don't know if any of this resonates with you, but um, I'm getting a really very nice positive um, reaction from your guides that you you're on your right path. You 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 know yourself well, and uh, people resonate with you. You're just. Uh, Lisa, damn it, come on over here. We all want to be your friend. <laughs> <laughs> we sure do. <laughs> anyway, that's yeah. what I got. <laughs> I love that. You know, I got, I let love guide you, which is what you do anyway. And they're just saying, choose to see the good in the world today. Just a reminder that sometimes when we have a, few little thoughts even we're going about in a really positive attitude and then one little thought flits in our mind and we're going what <laughs> just don't let that drag your energy down but be true to who you really are this is an important message for you that no matter what show up your authentic self no matter who you're in front of no matter who you're in front of, the angels of healing are with you. This is an Archangel Michael card. Just so you know that they are with you, blessing your life and walking with you. And they want you to let go of any burdens or any old structures, any old thought forms or frameworks for yourself that you have thought, this is what I am. No, be true to who you really are. Let this fall away, just like Colleen says, like a coat, take it off, drop it. Boom. Thank you. Yeah, I get your, <clears throat> it's, you're, you're almost in a decision making uh, mode. You have everything that you need. Um, and you have all the tools available to you to, uh, to kind of move on from, <clears throat> from something that's been troubling you. And I apologize, you guys. My allergies are really, really acting up. So hold on. Well, I can I can talk a little bit because I have the lovers. Um, Lisa, what this says to me is, is your angels and your guides are always around you. They're always supporting you. They're they're hoping for your best interest. You have to get out of the way so that they can do that. This is the Eight of Swords. Because your guides are able to really support you to be able to get the different perspective about what's going on. They, it, It's sort of like what you were saying, Val. Mm -hmm. they, they want you to be successful. And they want you to help you to keep seeing things differently and in an exciting way. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're, they're all about... I mean, they love it. And and Cleo was saying the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. So just stop thinking that they're not available for you because mm -hmm. they are. They're already there. You it, it's important thing to acknowledge it and to let them come in and help. Mm -hmm. So 
that's really powerful. Yeah. So what I got for you, Lisa, is um, none other than the goddess Isis to reclaim your magic. Wow. It says, call back your power and what is rightfully yours. So there's a memory of your mastery somewhere locked in your subconscious or, you know, deep, deep, deep consciousness. And you can let that go. You are a good person and you help people. There are perhaps in your lifetime, this lifetime, you've maybe lost certain fragments of yourself along the way in an effort to just live your life and get along and do the next thing and go to the next phase of your life. But now you're at a stage in your life where you can call back through your magic, through Isis, she will assist you. You can call back those fragment, fragment, fragments, it's easy for me to say, fragments of your soul so that you feel more whole because you are a really good person, but you're also a really powerful person. And people who find themselves in that kind of situation sometimes are a little uncomfortable with that power. You don't have to be uncomfortable with that power. Maybe the things that you need to let go of, the things that you've been hanging on to are just kind of cloaking you in a more normal look, right? So it literally is like a coat, like a, like a costume yes. that you wear so that you fit in as kind of a normal person, right? You're not a normal person, Lisa. You're like uber powerful, magical person. And you need to just step into that. Think of yourself as just stepping into a spotlight and just accepting all the light that shines down on you. That's all you have to do. Yeah. And then all the things that you want, messages from your guides and angels, uh, check, that'll happen. Yeah. But more importantly, you need to accept yourself, your power, the, the beauty and magic that you have within you and use it in your everyday life. Okay. Beautiful, beautiful. Wow. And what I was going to say before I had to take myself yeah. out, yeah. <clears throat> you've got all the tools to reclaim all the things that you were told you had to give up in order to be you. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, you have the tools. You're you're ready to move on to to calmer things. So, yeah, use use the magic. Use all the everything that you have in your tool chest to become the best version of yourself that you can be. Nice. 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 Great. Beautiful. Okay. We all, we all spoke, right? Okay. Yep. All right. So we'll unstart those and go on to, um, and another one will, it's very similar, but it's for a different person. Kristen F. I would love to know about my guides and how to understand things better. You know, Kristen, I've been looking at your question. You, you should start journaling. You should start writing things down, even though they don't make any sense. Uh, and then weave it all together. Like say, like, let's say you wrote stuff down for a week and at the end of the week, you bring it back all together. Then you would be able to understand things better because I think things are just coming to you at little spurts, little things that just kind of entering your mind. And I'm like, <clears throat> and you might dismiss it. You just might just like, well, whatever. But when that kind of thing comes up, just jot it down somewhere and kind of keep a little journal. And see if at the end of a week or two or three or whatever you, whatever you want to do, if it doesn't start to uh, make some sense and uh, kind of like a little roadmap. And that is uh, is your guides trying to talk to you. Also, don't dismiss things like um, little things that you might see. Um, Oh, God, I don't know how to explain. Like, let's say you're walking around and you see something on the ground that looks like a heart. It's not a heart. It's a leaf or something. Pay attention to those little kind of goofy things that might come up because it might bring all these little things together. Um, but your guides are definitely working with you. They're definitely with you. And my that's my suggestion is to keep a little journal and jot things down. And, and, you know, I'm just going to jump in here and say, Kristen, I have a meditation class where I, you can, will connect with your guides on June 1st. 
you can sign up for that at dragonflycrystals.store because you will go away from that one class talking to your guides because you are always talking to them. But somehow in this group, you will consciously talk to them and you will be forever connected on a conscious level after that. And I've never seen anyone not be able to do it. Um, so it's just a matter of sitting down and letting yourself have that moment. And somehow in the group, it's very powerful for that time to happen. And um, your guides are sending you the Aqua Marine Neptune Dragon. And this is, enables you to access your deepest soul wisdom. Spirituality and wisdom are available to you. Develop your psychic abilities and receive an and I still haven't looked this word up and don't know what it means, ineffable soul knowledge. <laughs> it's out of my $1. fifty vocabulary. <laughs> wow. Kristen, what she just was saying, that totally, I, I, that I can totally understand yeah. that. That is the best. You will save a lot of time if you, if you can do this class with, um, with Val. Mm -hmm. um, you, you will get it eventually yourself, but this way, when you've got other people helping you to do that it'll come much sooner and um and you will definitely understand things better so i'm so glad that val mentioned that oh, thank you yeah. Yeah. and ineffable means uh that it, what does it it's, mean? Much, it's indescribable that oh it's, thank not you. able to put it in words. Yeah. i finally learned thank you <laughs> welcome, welcome. Uh, yeah, Christian, I, I, I get the, I get the same thing. You are now strong enough um, that you're able to, to spend time in retrospection and listen, listen to what is actually being said because they are communicating with you. Um, they're, they're kind of always in your ear. It's just a matter of shutting out the noise and hearing what it is that they're. Uh, that they're saying, and they're always leading you in the right direction. Your guides are never there to test you, to, um, to, to see how serious you are in your convictions. They're always there to support you. So their messages always come in as um, loving messages, supportive messages. <clears throat> so, yeah, I, I agree. I, and Kristen... I'm also looking at pay attention to your dreams. Um, you, know, you know, it's like as as Cleo started off, it's like write it down, journal about it, put it down there. I got the seven of cups. So this is the card of wondering and imagining. And if you have a problem, this may sound this is gonna probably sound a little weird. If you have a problem and you're trying to find a solution or you're stuck on something say, you know, I'm going to wake up and I'm going to have an answer to this. That gives it over to your guides. It also allows you to get out of your own way and to process it through. So you're going to wake up with some clarity, it feels like. So that's, um, for me, that's a, um, a way to work with them and, uh, and to, it's almost like, um, okay, here's the order I'm putting in and I'm going to have wake up and I'm going to have a solution and I'm going to be well rested, rested. So beautiful. That's great. Um, Kristen, I, I pulled two cards for you and I love these cards that came up. The first one is um, the Miriam sacred vision. And it's uh, on the card. It says, choose to forgive in order to heal, see the light in all. Remember that love has no boundaries. And I'm just going to read from the little guidebook because um, this is from, Kyle, one of Kyle Gray's Oracle card decks. I just love his stuff. And it, I, I couldn't say this better myself. There's a real opportunity for you to move beyond grief or grievance at this time. The Miriam are here swirling their holy light all around you so that you can regain a sense of union with spirit. You are loved beyond words. Choose to see the light of God in everyone and everything and to love without boundaries. Honor others and honor yourself with your sacred vision. You are in a space of deep healing and forgiveness. Choosing to see the light of the world will help you grow even more. And the other card that I pulled is, and I'll just show you the beautiful picture of 
the two mm -hmm. people with the chalice well the the vivica pisces uh, symbol there so i don't know if that symbol means anything to you but it's a cool symbol and then the other card uh, and a different deck i pulled is guru ram das miraculous moment harmony surrounds you expect miracles and this is also just i gotta read it it's just too cool the blessings of Guru Ram Das are with you now. Even if the odds are stacked against you, you are being guided to expect miracles. I just want that to sink in. I'm going to read that sentence again. You are being guided to expect miracles. If you feel that there are energies, people, or situations trying to stop you from being yourself or from living the life you feel called to live, know that by staying connected to God, you will prevail. Don't allow anyone or anything to stand between you and your dreams. By staying committed to your vision, you allow that what may seem impossible will become a reality. Wow. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, that was like, whoa. You know, so Kristen, just a beautiful, beautiful message for you from everyone, really. I, everyone had beautiful messages. Okay. Uh, so we've got a whole bunch of things here left. And what I'd like to do is borrow Gerald's technique here and just let everyone, I think we'll just do like maybe five more questions and see what the timing is because we've already been on at <coughs> seven. So each one of us will do one of the next questions. We'll start with Val, then Marina, then Cleo, then Gerald, then me, and we'll see where we're at there. Okay. Can so, I do that? Can I do Ziggy? Oh, sure. We'll start with you then, and then we'll go back to Val and Marina. Okay, go ahead. So, um, your your brother is having a hard time of letting go. You know, he just doesn't. He can't imagine what he would do without working at something, whether he got paid for it or not. Uh, you know, he just he likes to stay busy, and uh, he's he's afraid that if he just retires and relaxes that that life might end for him right there you know and that his life has been somebody that is always involved always busy always working um so you're gonna have to let your brother decide when he wants to do that you know um <laughs> i know what you mean that you know you're looking at some people like hey you've done your part you've done everything you can yeah. do it's time to kick back and relax <laughs> but your brother um i think you know he's he's out there looking for a new job and he just wants to stay busy and uh, maybe, maybe he'll come up maybe he'll become self-employed or something but mm -hmm. he's just he, he's he's not going to take your advice right right yet. He's not ready for it. He wants to be around people. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That was great reading. All right. So Val, if you can take um, Imelda. I have to unmute myself for this one. <laughs> Imelda. <clears throat> I mean, it is a third party reading, but I can tell you that if your niece <clears throat> wants to move on from having a boyfriend who would have the audacity to move out while she's gone, then she will have the wisdom to know that she was lucky. Yes. <laughs> okay, first of all, let me and foremost, let me congratulate her on losing that person. Too yeah. sweet without any drama. Amen. Yeah. Let me get an amen to that. Thank amen. you, brothers and sisters. Amen. And a fan thwarp. I mean, yes. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, on the note of the drama, tell her to surrender to what is so absolutely 100% surrender to the situation and feel the feelings and be thankful because there is a golden rainbow over her head and yeah. bless, bless the universe for assisting her create the now as she would like it to be now minus what she just, the weight she just dropped. <laughs> 
We'll say it like that. I'm sorry. Let's just be a little bit straight about it. Break free. I did not look at these cards. This is how they're coming up. Break free. Yes. Remember these cards. Show her this video. Hallelujah and congratulations. Mm -hmm. I am very thankful you did not have to go through endless <laughs> drama over this. Man, the universe has your back. In the grand scheme of things, four years is nothing. Four years is nothing. Yeah. Nope. Be grateful. Good and, riddance uh, to bad rubbish. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and you guys, I had to take one out because I forgot to unstar something we already did. So um, I've been working on Allie Ray's question, if that's okay. Um, so Marina, if you can do Emily... Ito, I'll do Ali Ray, and then Gerald, if you can do Lisa Niedermeyer, and then we'll see what time we have. Sure. Okay. So, we'll work on me working with Patsy. Okay. Hmm. <clears throat> okay. Well, <laughs> yes, actually, you guys are going to make a really good team because. You're the one that comes up with the ideas and Patsy knows how to make them um, come to, to reality. So, yes, absolutely. This is something that is going to financially benefit both of you. But I think that, yes, absolutely. It, it, it will work out just uh, as long as, you know, you understand you're the creative one. Give her the ideas and she will put it all together. But, yeah. Absolutely. Great. Oh, great. Okay. And then um, Ali Ray, uh, what are my prospects on career change? I've been thinking about pursuing a nursing job. I think you absolutely should pursue nursing. I got great feelings for you about healing and being in touch with people. And the card that I pulled was um, none other than Krishna's co consort, Radha. I mean, the most loving, the most beautiful, the most benevolent, the most, you know, just attractive to all and just so, so kind and, and knowledgeable, very wise. So really, really good. That's a good one. I also pulled another card and you may need this one. This is Joan of Arc, Voice of Truth. Stand strong, focus on your purpose, release the fear of persecution and speak your truth. So anybody that is telling you that you cannot do this, just wipe them out of your life. You do not need someone in your life filling you with doubt or fear of anything. Just focus on what you want. Visualize you doing this job and just go go forth and do it, Allie Ray. <laughs> you will do it. I think it's wonderful. So that's what I have to say about that. Okay. Gerald, you're getting, uh, where did it go? Lisa Le Le Niedermeyer. Yeah. There we go. I became a new patient for a neurologist at Yale. I will have testing on July 3rd. Is Dr. Trainer the right one for me? I'm on too much of medication for entertainment purposes only. Um, yes, actually, I'm getting um, definitely a more yes on this one in particular because um, I feel Dr. Trainer is uh, is comfortable and confident in his abilities, and um, that is that is assuredly what is necessary. I am also getting that um, you're going to have to they're going to have to carefully look at all of the things that you are doing and making sure that they are doing what they're supposed to be doing, and you are responding to those. Um, <clears throat> It may take a little longer than what you want because um, I'm getting a feeling of this that the doctor is going to want to take a very analytical approach to things and do things from that perspective. Um, and um, it may not work faster than you. However, what I would also <laughs> encourage you to say, Lisa, I encourage you to tell your doctor everything that's been going on for you and you make sure you write it down so in the moment you don't get overwhelmed 
and you can have it written down and you can go, I have all of these things written down and by all means offer to give it to them so that they can do it. So thanks, Lisa. Okay. And we do have a few left. Um, we've got actually nine left. So maybe if every, if each person, when you're doing this, maybe just keep it as brief as possible. We'll see if we can get through these. So Rebecca has actually, she posted twice, but it's kind of the same thing she has since we're asking about jobs. Will my daughter Katie get a job? And my son is also trying to find a job. And as I said before, this is imperative. You must force all children into hard labor. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> but we all want our kids to be, you know, prosperous and all of that stuff. So um, I don't know which, I guess I'll show, I'll keep the first one up there. So um, should we just go around the circle yeah. again? Yeah, I already got it. So yeah, she, she will get a job fairly soon. Keep her fears out of it. Keep her from being anxiety ridden over it because the sun is shining on her opportunities so this is the next set of cards. Yes. Moving on. <laughs> Gee, can you, are you doing the next one? The sun, is he, is he coming out or oh. who, who's doing the sun? Oh, the sun? I'll, I'll do also, the sun. It's also Rebecca Gilberto. Oh, no. Sorry. Do the sun. You can do it, Maria. I don't care. Whatever. That's all right. If Gerald's pulled for, for the sun, that's okay. Your son is going to actually get a job. It's going to be an overnight job. This is the moon and it's, he's, you know, so yes, he's going to apply for it. It's going to be a third shift job and he's actually going to make a decent amount of money at this. Um, I would encourage you to teach him how to save up money so he can move out of the house because ultimately, uh, Rebecca, he's going to have to take care of you. Which goes back to that ch all children need to be in hard labor. Hard labor, yes. They have to, yeah. <laughs> they, have, they have to have big Roth IRAs too. Okay. Yes. All right. So <laughs> that, that was that one. We'll unstart that. And now uh, Karen, Karen, I said Karen. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> Karen Trout, what do the cards say about the job I applied for? Take it away, Marina. Um, it's, yeah. Empress, absolutely. This works out. You're, uh, they're going to ask you to start sooner than you anticipate. So if you think that, um, you know, this job might start on the first of the month, I, I think that it's going to come in a little, a little quicker. And there, there's going to be things about the job that are, um, that maybe they, they haven't quite told you all of it yet, but I think it works out well. And you're quite happy with this, with the nine of pentacles. It, it yeah, financially it's good for you. And uh, I think you're going to enjoy the position. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. And uh, Cleo, can you do uh, Dorian? You want me to read it? No, I'm, I'm reading it. Okay. Our fears of past life. I'm afraid of bridges and can't wear anything around my neck. When, when I was 10, I dre dreamed I was with Anne Boylan and I'm afraid of bridges and anything with these fears. Uh, you are using these things to um, protect yourself from something entirely different. Um, it just comes about because there's something uh, I, I don't know if you experienced in this life or in a past life. Let me see. Both. You've, you've got some things that you've experienced in, in past lives and in this life that may be connected, but it doesn't really have anything to do with bridges. It doesn't have anything to do with wearing anything around your neck. That's just how it's manifested. Uh, you, you know, you, you can, these are, you need to use these fears to your benefit. Really look at the fear. Look at the, you know, and think to yourself, what, what is it about this that I'm afraid of? Um, what, what, it, you know, the bridges, the something around your neck. It's got, you know, it's got something to, there's the path that something around the neck has, that's a past life thing. Um, you may have been 
you may have been strangled in a past life. You may have had uh, some uh, physical injuries to your throat and neck in a past life. But the things that keep coming up, that's really a, uh, it's like a shield to protect you from the real problem. And the only person that I can think of right now that can, you know, other than going and asking your spirit guides, if they will help you with this is just look at it yourself. And, and, um, I mean, I've gone through some things that I was afraid of. And so I just said, okay, I'm going to face this and I want, you know, make it just as fearful as I can. Why? And why is it that way? Why is it so uncomfortable? and get kind of get past the actual thing and because it's not it's not the bridges it's not the bridges you're just your your subconscious is using that to protect you from something but what you're asking is <clears throat> very very complex and um and i do think it mixes in with past lives and present life and so uh you all you also could benefit by going to somebody and getting a really good reading because this is this kind of goes past something that you could actually figure out right this moment it's it's intense you're you're dealing with some intense stuff but i do feel that you are going to overcome it because you're going to realize that it's not the bridge and it's not something around your neck that it's something that this is what you have manifested to prevent yourself from really seeing what it is. Yeah. I, I, I wish I could be more specific. I, I just, I don't really know how to, because I tell you, Dorian, this is really a complex thing and uh, you should not allow yourself to be, if it stops you from doing things that you want to do in life, you need to, figure a way out to, to let it go. But I, I you know, I, I would say to go to a, uh, go to a reader who can really work with you on this. Yeah. And Anne Boleyn was the second wife of Henry the eighth and she was beheaded. And um, also, even if these things came from a past life, you don't have to let it limit you in this lifetime. One of the reasons you're here right now is probably to release that limitation and go beyond it. And um, yeah, Marina's pointing up at uh, Val, a, a good Akashic reading might help this and help bring about a healing about this too. So, all right. Thank yeah. you, Theo. That was Connect with Val. Yeah, that was a very good, very good response. Thanks very I'm much. Sorry, you guys. I have to... I. I didn't know I was going to end up doing this, but I, I scheduled a Zoom members meeting, and unfortunately, it's for it starts in five minutes or okay. four minutes. Okay. <laughs> you okay. Thank you for your time, Al. Yeah. We'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye. 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 Take care. Bye. Bye. <clears throat> well, at least she was here for the plug for her channel. Okay. There go. you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So uh, the next one is, uh, did I erase the one that I wanted to show? I don't know. Well, we'll just put this one up. Um, uh, Gerald, I actually started to, to shuffle on this. So can I do this one? Yeah, go for okay. it. All right. So Tracy, um, you know, 18 and 19 year olds, the time for them is going to just drag on until their 20s. So it could be that they're they're um thinking that that's a long ways off when really it looks yeah. like it's you know maybe 12 or 18 months off but what i'm seeing for them is that this is a really great fantasy it's a really really beautiful dream that they have together and some things are going to change very quickly here and it's going to change their ideas about the future and what they want to do drastically now in the meantime, you know, they could take some practical steps to looking into how am I going to support myself in the EU? <clears throat> not allowed to work in all the countries just by showing up and applying for a job. It's 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 not like filling out a form at Walmart. You have to actually go through quite a bit of stuff to be able to be allowed to work. Now, if they're just talking about maybe 
You know, they said they want to move there. Yeah. So they got to look into some actual technical legal stuff. But I think in the next 12 to 18 months, there's going to be huge, big changes in their life. And I don't want to splash water on their dream, but I highly doubt that it's actually going to come to fruition. If it does, then it's, you know, their life and the mistakes that they're going to make. But maybe this isn't a mistake for them. You know, maybe it's great, but I do think things are going to change dramatically in the next 12 to 18 months. So I don't, I don't really see it coming about. So that's what I got for you. I think they're going to run into some money problems. Yeah. Get, getting money to go where they want to go. And I'm just getting a job over there, but uh, I don't think they're going to be able to come up with the funds to do what they want to do, at least right for right now. I mean, Maybe they'll go to Canada instead. There you go. <laughs> a little bit easier. Little, And then eventually they can go to another Commonwealth country, you know. Yeah, because you have to, in order to go into any uh, EU country right now, you have to be able to support yourself for anywhere between three and six months. You have to have that money on hand. Like show them that you're not going, to, if, if, if you're in their country, you're not going to be a draw on their um, on their resources. So, yeah, maybe when they realize that they need to save between now and the time that they want to go, twenty five, thirty thousand dollars, they might look something closer to home. Yeah, because yeah. all that set up money, setting up to live somewhere. Yes. I don't know if they'd need a car at all in Europe, but just setting up to live somewhere, buying a few sticks of furniture, probably changing their wardrobe to accommodate whatever yes. country they're in, you know, I mean, that takes some cash. So it's, it's highly unlikely at this point, yeah. not impossible, but highly not likely. Okay. All right. Good. So let's move on here. Um, unstart that one uh then all the all the rest of the questions have to do with uh messages from guides uh -huh. um, so there we, we we should probably whip through these pretty fast okay all right let's go and who's that for gerald sure sure all right okay, <laughs> all right. okay. You know, have you done the gong yet? Is is are these people here? So. Oh, let's see. Thank you. I haven't yeah. done the gong yet. Ooh, okay, no, who we're looking for diamond. Okay. Diamond, come back to the chat. Come back to the chat. We need you now. Come back. Come back. We need you now. Come back to the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. So, Diamond, what I have for you is um, messages from your guides. Use them as a resource when you're trying to make decisions. This is the Two of Swords. Use them to be able to, to, to help you because you're worrying and you're trying to carry more than what you need to. Allow them to, allow them to support you. So that's what I have for you, Diamond. Okay. Thank you very much. All right, should I play the gong for Alamac 859? Do we know if they're there? Oh, what the heck, I'm playing it. Okay, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> Come back to the chat. Come back to the chat. We need you now. Come back. Come back. We need you now. Come back to the chat. Okay. So, um, who's going to do oh, it? Al, Al Mac. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll do, um, yeah. They want you to pay a little more attention to your, your finances. Okay. It, it's fun to go out there and take a chance and, um, kind of live, live in the moment that, well, the universe will provide it will, but they want you to just keep an eye on your finances because sometimes, you know, the, the way that we learn the, the lessons is the universe will provide until it says, okay, now you got to come up with your own solution. 
So that's that's what I'm getting uh, getting for you is that they're they're guiding you to, um, yeah, just watch your finances and don't don't treat yourself to uh, you know new new clothes quite so often, right? That's what I got. Interesting. Okay. All right. So we're on to Kim. And do we need the gong for Kim? Sure. Go for it. <laughs> I, I like the gong. It's, it's fun. Uh -huh. It is fun. It amuses me too. Okay, so Kim needs messages from her guides. So I will give her a message from her guides. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Allie you know, Mack. While, while, you're work, while you're working on that, um, artist Liz has uh, donated here and uh, oh. she also commented on, I think, I think Colleen was the one that did the reading for her. And so she is saying, you were on the right track. Great. Wow. Yeah, I see that. Oh, God. Well, thanks for the donation. And Yeah, thank you. Okay, so, Kim, yeah. your guides are telling you it's time for a Merkaba activation. And this brings you into the level of transcendence, ascension, you're rising up. So you're doing work. You're doing a lot of work. You're raising your vibration. You're on your spiritual path. And now you can get assistance with the Merkaba. Now the Merkaba looks like this shape. So if you research Merkaba any way you want to spell it, Google's going to get you there because you can spell it mm -hmm. about eight different ways. Don't worry about the spelling. You want to look up the Merkaba, maybe get um, a picture of the Merkaba in this beautiful like rainbow prism background and meditate on this or scry on this and see where that leads you in your activation. And that's what your guides want you to know. Okay. And now we have Puja Gupta and can we do the gong one last time. Sure. Okay. Who's ever boat gets floated can do this one. Okay. Pooja. Um, take the action that you need to do. It's the queen of swords. It's time to do all of the things that you know you can do. Do it. Stop waiting for other people to do it for you because they're not going to do it the right way. You're going to do it the right way. And uh, this is a card of rest assured, you know exactly what you mean, you know exactly what to do, and you know exactly how to say what you need to say. Do it. Beautiful. Beautiful. Nice. Okay. So we've done um, all the starred messages. And let me take that one off as well. Thank you, everybody. This was nice. We've been on about an hour and a half, a little longer than probably we should have been, but we're there you have it. <laughs> so, so thank you, everybody. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. Just Gerald's message there, or Val's message there. So thank you very much. We'll see you, um, I think, in a couple of weeks. Same time, same Oracle channel. And I'm very grateful for you all being here.